Hello, my name is James Clark from King's College London. In this brief walkthrough, I'm going to look at ways of describing your data sets and also how to test for normality within your experimental data using GraphPad Prism. On the screen, you can see the results of four experimental outcomes. You can see data for groups A, B, C, and D, which have different n numbers in each group, and clearly a different numerical outcome in terms of the data set. We can view these data as a graph, and I've prepared the same data as a scatter graph so we can observe the distribution of our data within each group. You can clearly see that groups A, B, and C appear to have a fairly wide distribution of data and appear to represent the outcome of three different experiments. Group D, however, has a very narrow distribution of data, very small error bars, and I would be concerned looking at these data whether they might be normally distributed. However, before testing for normality, we're going to ask a few questions of these data and ask PRISM to summarize these data in the form of a descriptive statistics. You can carry out descriptive statistics on any column of data in PRISM by clicking on the Analyze button in either the graph or the table view, or click on New Analysis within the results window. In this example, I'm going to click on the Analyze button from the group data shown here in the graph. When you click on the Analyze data, you get the Analyze data option window. And from here, you can choose a number of analyses from the selection on the left hand side. I want to look at the descriptive statistics of these data, so I'm going to click on Descriptive Statistics from the Column Analyses option. I don't have to analyze or show the descriptive statistics from all of my data sets, but in this example I'm going to, so I make sure that in the Analyze Which Data Sets option box I've selected A, B, C, and D. If you have more columns representing, for instance, different experiments that you don't want to show these statistics for, you can deselect them simply by clicking on the little boxes next to each of the column headers. Having selected your data set, you click on the OK button. The next window that appears are the parameters for your descriptive statistics. PRISM offers a wide array of descriptive statistics that you can look at. By default, it highlights the mean, standard deviation, and standard error of the mean, as well as the mix, minimum, maximum, and range of your data. In addition to these basic options, you have a number of other options, including the sum of your columns, the quartiles, and in the advanced and confidence interval option, you can look at coefficient of variation, geometric means, harmonic means, quadratic means, and in the confidence intervals, you can look at confidence levels set at whatever level you want to set them at. Once you've selected the statistics you wish to view, you can click on the OK button. And when you do this, the descriptive statistics results window appears on the screen. On the left hand side, you'll see we now have a new results pane called descriptive statistics of group data, group data being the name of the table and the graph that I'm analyzing. The descriptive statistics window is self explanatory. You can see divided A, B, C, and D, the descriptive statistics that we requested. You can see our n number in the top row and then our minimum, percentiles, medium, maximum, range, etc. down each column. It's easy to see the results of your descriptive statistics for creating tables or other figures outside of PRISM. Now that we know a little bit about our data in terms of the mean values and distribution around those means, it's good to know whether our data fit to a normal or bell-shaped distribution curve. When carrying out a parametric analysis of your data, such as a t-test or an ANOVA, it's important to know whether your data are indeed normally distributed 
before you do these tests. We're going to return to our group data table and we're then going to click again on the Analyze button. Once more, the Analyze Data window appears and from the left hand side, we choose Normality and Log Normality Tests. On the right hand side, we can choose which data sets we wish to analyze, and on this occasion, once more, we want to select all of our data sets. A useful function is the Deselect All and Select All buttons. If you click on Deselect All, all your data are deselected, and then you can choose, for instance, the data sets you wish to analyze in particular, or you can click on the Select All button, and all of the data sets on that given table will be selected. Once you've determined which data you wish to compare, you then click on OK. The next window is the parameters window in order to carry out normality tests. In this example, I'm going to carry out a normal or Gaussian bell-shaped curve distribution test, but I could also choose a log normal distribution. There are a number of options in PRISM of which method you wish to test your distributions. We actually recommend the D'Agostino Pearson normality test. The one that PRISM uses is the Omnibus K2 test. The test is very simple and works out how far the distribution is from Gaussian in terms of asymmetry and shape. And then it calculates how far each of your values differ from the value expected with a Gaussian distribution. It produces a single p-value from the sum of these discrepancies, which it then reports. If your p-value is less than 0.05, if you select your significance level, for instance here in the alpha to 0.05, your data will not be normally distributed. We have an option to create a QQ plot, and we also have some other options on how to display our p-value as we do in other statistical tests. It is worth noting the little question mark down the bottom left of all of these option screens will bring up the very intuitive PRISM help screen in order to understand further what these tests will be doing to your data. However, I want to do a normal distribution test using the standard D'Agostino Pearson normality test. So I select this one from our list and I continue with the tests by pressing the OK button. The window will appear in the results section showing a normality and log normality test results. We can see on the screen we have data from groups A, B, C and D. The K2 value and the P value is reported and then the significance is given to tell us whether it passed a normality test or not. It's interesting to see here that group A has failed normality test. You can see that group B has passed a normality test. Group C, the data set are too small. We only have an N of five here, and this was not able to do a full normality test on it. If you remember from the graph, I questioned the distribution of group D, thinking that they were a little bit too tightly bunched to be normally distributed. And you can see here, it failed the normality test with a p-value of two stars. This really shows that these data are not normally distributed and would be unwise to carry out a parametric test on these data. So in general, we can find out some very interesting information about our data sets without doing any statistical tests, just simply by using the descriptive statistics to show means, standard deviations, and confidence intervals, and using a normality and log normality test to check your data for normal distribution prior to doing any statistical analyses of your data.